I'm Ryan McCaffrey from IGN, and for me, a positive memory from a game in 2020, well, I'm going to cheat a little bit. It's a game originally from 2007, but re-released in 2020, and that would be Super Mario Galaxy on the back of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I got to play this with my daughter, who's now nine, and it's her first time playing it, obviously, and I went from me playing and her watching to her not wanting to put the controller down. She loves it, and that just totally warms my heart to see. For me, the best VR game, at least, of this year was Star Wars Squadrons. I've been playing the hell out of it, and it's amazing. The multiplayer dogfights are great. Uh, I love all the little cameos, Admiral Ackbar and Wedge and characters like that. Uh, you know, being an old school uh, Star Wars trilogy fanboy, of course, this is something I've been fantasizing about for a long, long time, being in an actual X-Wing or TIE Fighter, etc. And uh, man, it, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, so that's it. That's my pick. I've been playing a lot of other games, but that's the main one that's been allowing me to uh, escape this awesome year. So anyway, I hope everyone's doing well, and happy holidays to you, Vic, and to everyone. Peace! My favorite gaming moment of 2020 was definitely the rooftop scene from Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, I've never actually even played the original Final Fantasy 7. I have dabbled uh, in Final Fantasies, um, but that was the moment that that game really clicked for me and it kind of really made me understand why people love 7 so much and why they have such a reverence for it. And I think for me it just came out at a very perfect time because the world was kind of going on lockdown, there was a lot of chaos, and then you kind of have this moment, and I was playing the game, and similarly in the game there's a lot of chaos going on and a lot of things happening, and then you have this moment of respite, and it's backed up by this beautiful characterization, fantastic acting, as well as just some incredible music, and honestly I remember playing that scene for the first time and just pausing, and it really, I really needed that at the time, and that's why the rooftop scene has always stuck with me. We got a note from Trevor Cooper who said, my favorite moment in games this terrible and long year was playing through The Last of Us Part Two with my significant other. It may not have been the most cheerful game, but it set a new benchmark for interactive fiction. This game completely enthralled us both from start to finish. It also shed light on a number of content creators who seemed to have a mindset that didn't jive with the message of the game. I unsubscribed from many people because of this, and channels like EPN are one in a million. Hey, it's Jeff Canada from the DLC video game podcast at 5x5.tv slash DLC. And I wanted to share an incredible moment that I had this year playing a video game. Maybe you've already seen my game of the year, but spoiler alert, it's Half-Life Alex. And my name is Jeff Canada, as I said, that's spelled J-E-F-F. -F. And there's a moment in Half-Life Alex, an entire chapter entitled J-E-F-F -F Jeff. I won't give away what it is if anybody out there hasn't played it. But I will tell you that when I was playing it in the headset, in VR, completely immersed in that world, my heart racing, doing incredible things, and all of a sudden up on the screen, everything fades to black and the word Jeff came up on the screen as the title of the next chapter. I must admit, I thought for a moment the game had gone completely next level and was somehow mining my username or my real name to somehow personalize the game just for me. And it was an incredible moment. <laughs> then I actually played the level entitled Jeff and that blew my mind in a completely new way. So one of my most memorable moments from 2020 is when I thought a video game was talking directly to me.